The most recent king introduced at the time of making this video is Megalodontia. Out of the current three kings we have, it's the biggest, has the most HP, and in my opinion, the trickiest to defeat when in freelance. But I've learned a thing or two in my attempts, so let's talk about how you can defeat more of these very hungry sharks. Number one, stats and mechanics. Gonna quickly discuss how Megalodontia waves work first, as I think it's important to understand the mechanics of a wave before you can think about developing strategies. Also, from this point on, I'll be likely referring to the boss as Joe, because, because this, this is the reason it's known as Joe. Joe's health can range from 48,100 up to 65,000. It caps out at 65,000 when the team reaches 60% hazard. This health is reduced following a disconnect. Joe's attack cycle is similar to that of a Moors, in which it will submerge and target a player. When targeted, a large circle with a crosshair will follow a player for around 4-5 to five seconds. You will then get about 3 seconds to leave the area in which Joe will target. This is accompanied by visual aids and an alarm sounding. Joe will then jump out and swallow everything that is in this circle. This process in of itself is about 1 second in length. After this, Joe remains stationary and above ground for around 6 seconds, but will start the attack cycle again very quickly and begin targeting another player. As the wave is 100 seconds long, Joe ends up attacking 9 times. That means Joe is only above the ground for approximately 60 seconds. That leaves around 40 seconds in which Joe cannot be damaged. This is quite significant and something we'll talk more about later on in the video. When Joe launches out of the ground, whatever enemy is in the circle will be destroyed all bosses and all lessers. This creates golden eggs very easily, but again, we'll talk more about that later in the video. If caught in Joe's mouth during its attack, it's more often than not immediate death. There are ways to escape this though. Primarily, if you are using Julie's, you have the Kraken special, or if you've had enough momentum when moving. Joe has a weak spot, but it isn't similar to the way the Horror Boris has a weak spot. It's a giant, unmissable red spot with a huge X on it that is practically screaming, hit me. When you do hit this, you deal 70% more damage to Joe. So for example, if you hit the weak spot with a Tentabrella, which does 360 per shot, you will actually deal 612 damage to Joe. This is where the majority of your attacks on Joe should be focused, however you can still damage Joe by hitting it anywhere on its body for regular damage. Joe's back always faces where it was previously attacked, making it pretty simple to lure and know where the weak point will be. The only time this differs is for Joe's first attack, with its back facing where the first bosses spawn. Joe targets the players in a cycle. It's random who gets chosen first, but if nobody dies, it will cycle through the players one by one and repeat the same pattern. If you're the second person targeted, you'll be the second person targeted again if nobody dies. Dying disrupts the cycle and causes Joe to skip players, causing things to become difficult to track. Golden eggs are used to deal damage on this wave and they do 800 damage with direct hits. If the egg doesn't hit a target directly and falls to the ground, it deals 200 splash damage within a small radius. I think it's important to say that using the egg cannon in extra waves is a different mechanic compared to throwing eggs in regular waves. The egg cannon doesn't deal the 100 damage ink explosion when thrown, it doesn't use your ink tank and it doesn't pierce or go through objects. Number 2. Weapon Rolls Knowing what you need to do with what weapon you have is really important during Joe fights as its higher health requires more strategic playing. You'll want to make sure you're using the weapon in the most efficient way possible, ensuring you increase the chances of winning the fight. Before I speak about weapon rolls, something you should be doing regardless of which weapon you have is leading Joe towards cluster of bosses. It doesn't matter what weapon you have, Joe will annihilate every enemy on the field in its radius and this is so much quicker than doing it with a weapon yourself. This produces golden eggs of course and allows everybody to inflict damage on Joe in some capacity. If you have a weak weapon, golden eggs will be more beneficial most of the time, so use them. Similar to Kohazuna fights, you want to ensure that weapons that have high DPS or are powerful single shot weapons focus primarily on Joe and its weak spot. Weapons like the Hydra, Tristringer, Wellstring, Elita, Dapples, Reflux, Sploosh, 
are some of these weapons. They are able to unleash an insane amount of DPS in the short time frame that Joe is above ground and reachable. You should always keep an eye on Joe's launch point if you have a powerful weapon as you'll want to be there to shoot at it whenever you can. Ideally, you'll want to hit the weak spot as much as possible given the 70% extra damage you do. However, I appreciate that given Joe's uh, size, you may not be able to. It is still worth shooting at his body, however. With the Elita and Grisco Charger, you're able to pierce through Joe's body. If you aim right, you can hit Joe's body and weak point simultaneously, causing 270% damage per shot. For an Elita, that's 1620 damage instead of 600. For the Grisco Charger, that's 540 per shot instead of 200. For the Grisco Charger especially, given its rate of fire, you can deal 3640 damage in 7 quick shots before you need to refill your ink tank. This is just something you should consider when given either of these weapons. For your other Grisco weapons, your roll will vary slightly. The Splatana and Stringer both have the potential to focus primarily on Joe and should focus on the weak spot. The Splatana does 1200 with a fully charged slash, 2040 when aimed at the weak spot, and the Stringer, or Bow, does 1350 if all 9 arrows hit the same target, which then becomes 2295 when hitting the weak spot. The Bow should also utilize taps and partials when able to as this still allows it to output quite significant damage even more per ink tank than fully charging the weapon. The Splatana should remain fluid with objectives however as its 200 damage tap slashes are very effective for crowd control and its ability to shred through armored bosses should not be dismissed. I should also mention that the Grisco Slusher has this ability too and should heavily focus on boss slaying and piercing multiple enemies to help contribute to overall management of enemies on the field. The Grisco Blaster, Brella, Julies, and Roller are all weapons that are capable of moving around maps and enemies with a lot more ease and as a result should not focus on one objective. You will be able to provide paint or lesser control for your teammates and sometimes that might be all you need to do to allow your teammates with more powerful weapons the ability to shred Joe. You may find it more efficient to use Golden Eggs to damage Joe instead of just shooting at it as these Grisco weapons are generally not as powerful as the previously mentioned. Aside from some cool roller tech I'll mention later, you should strike a fine balance of using your main weapon and golden eggs. Blasters, brellas, splatanas, slushers, rollers and brushes and the majority of shooters and jewelies are really good flex weapons during Joe fights and should utilise the strengths of their weapons. Blasters and slushers should use their AoE, rollers and brushes should crush enemies, splatanas and brellas are really good for boss slaying and should focus on this and the shooters and jewelies should manage turf where wherever possible and keep an eye on statics. All of these weapons won't have one particular role in a squad and you're able to do a lot with all of them. Stay flexible and consider where you fit in in regards to the rest of the weapons on your team. Weapons that need to charge are always at a slight disadvantage in Salmon Run overall, not just during King Waves. However, you may find it more difficult to find your feet or focus during Joe fights as things are generally a bit more chaotic, especially on some maps with delimited space. Don't overextend yourself and try Try to focus on having enough ink in reserve if you quickly need to escape. The majority of these weapons are able to inflict damage at a high rate, so ensuring you remain alive should be the number one priority. You're depending on your teammates to take care of the trash around you, so you can focus on the main task, which is slaying Joe. If you have a slightly faster and weaker charging weapon, such as the mini splatling, bamboozler or goo tuber, then consider if you're better served by helping with boss management instead of only focusing on Joe. My last bit of advice regarding weapon rolls is more for freelance but is also good to take on for all times you're playing. The high health of Joe means that unless you're actively damaging it, it is unlikely that you'll defeat it. It's all well and good that you know which weapons are better for shooting at the king directly versus which weapons are better at hunting for statics and other bosses, but again, like the other kings, Salmon Run is a team game and you're expected to contribute to the main objective, which in this case is defeating Joe. Do not neglect any opportunity you may have to fire at Joe. Any moment you have downtime or are able to damage Joe regardless if you're hitting its weak spot or not is worth doing. Given that you cannot damage it for about 40% of the wave, you really need to put damage on it whenever you can. Even if you have a weak weapon, you are still damaging the king. Trust me when I say that this alone goes so much further than hunting for a final big shot or stinger on the other side of the map that you could probably ignore. Number 3. Specials 
The majority of specials will be used to fill gaps that your comp cannot fill. The crab is one of the best specials to be given due to its ability to put out considerable damage. Crab deals over 7,000 damage when you're able to use it on one target without interruption. However, the length of crab is longer than you're able to hit Joe before it submerges again. You'll get about 50 to 70% total of your crab against it. Crab ends up doing approximately 7,000 damage if you're able to hit the weak spot for 5 to 6 seconds. This fact is in the damage multiplier. If you don't hit the weak spot, you're looking at around 4,000 damage. These are conservative estimates, by the way, not strict calculations, but I say them to get across the point of how important it is to hit the weak spot with certain specials or weapons. You'll want to use the crab when you know you have the safety and freedom to use it without interruptions to fully maximize it. This can be difficult and you don't want to end up wasting it if you're disrupted. The best time I've found to use it is when I know I will not be targeted next. Immediately after after I have been targeted and the Joe lunges out of the water, ideally with the weak spot facing me. It's easier said than done, however, as sometimes it's just too messy to do this. However, this way ensures I won't be immediately targeted next and I can use most of the crab on Joe without having to plan an escape. The rest of the specials will need to be used in a way that you think they're needed. Specials like Whale, Inkjet, Booyah and Ink Strike are good to use against Joe itself if you're struggling to get close to it or range is an issue. However, I often find they're better used for clusters of statics to eliminate them quickly so I can go back to focusing on Joe. However this varies and it really depends on what you think is missing from your comp, either range or explosive AoE. Splashdown, Reef, Booyah and Wavebreaker are all really good at clearing the immediate spawns in front of you and they can also help with damaging Joe should it be exposed at that point. When using specials like these, short explosive area clearing specials, you should aim to combine as many enemies as possible to fully maximize it. This also includes Joe and its weak spot should you be able to hit it. Alternatively, if you are a slow charging weapon that is primarily focusing on Joe, then these specials are really useful for keeping you alive, refilling your ink tank and allowing you to use your main weapon against Joe. If you have a Hydra, the actual Hydra is far more useful than a Booyah Bomb, so using the Booyah to keep you alive is, in the grand scheme of things, a way better use of a Booyah Bomb than trying to play too smart with it. Oftentimes in Summer Run, you can can and should use a special in the right situations if it allows you to live and continue to slay. Don't be afraid to save yourself. I suppose the same can be said for Kraken, it's very useful for allowing you to live longer and keep up pace. However, Kraken I find especially useful on certain maps against Joe, being able to use it to survive and to put myself in riskier situations just to get more damage on it. You can also pierce armoured bosses so you can clear areas very quickly with it. Your charges are more powerful than your jumps, but oftentimes I prefer to use the jumps just so I have a bit more control on the direction I'm going. Either way you use it, just be mindful of the greats or being bounced off the stage. Number four, strategies. Joe being able to interact with all other enemies on the map is a godsend. However, you need to be careful not to drag him too far away or have its weak spot be unreachable. It's important to direct Joe to clusters of bosses, especially bosses that may take time to kill, like stingers or flyfish. But you'll also need to consider how far you're taking it away from the action. It's no use leading it to a corner for some bosses, but all your teammates are in different positions and able to stop what they're doing to come to you. In situations like this, I'd recommend keeping Joe with you and your teammates in close proximity and having one person go for those far statics. You want Joe with the majority of players, so having a 3-1 split in favour of the majority being with Joe will be more beneficial to the objective. Trust me when I say that sometimes you can absolutely ignore a static or two just so you can damage Joe or keep it in a position that benefits the entire squad. Because of Joe's ability to destroy enemies, it can be, theoretically, quite easy to win this wave. However, I find this wave the trickiest in freelance as I think it requires every player to be extremely proactive and mindful of their actions. One person slacking off or not understanding their role is enough to cause a loss. It means bosses aren't killed, eggs don't get created and boss management becomes messy. The key to winning more Joe fights is to always be aware of what is coming next. When Joe is ready to lunge out, where it will be attacking, how you can use the golden eggs and what you're planning to do next. In addition, ensuring that the weak spot is facing your teammates is extremely important and something to be constantly thinking about. Damage inflicted on Joe regardless of where you hit it is good. 
but if you can get an extra 70% per shot, wouldn't you prefer to do so? You don't need to stop what you're doing when you're targeted, but you need to be ready to drop Joe where it will be more effective for your entire team. A badly positioned Joe is approximately 10 seconds wasted, which, when you only have 100 seconds to defeat it, is a huge loss of efficiency. When you factor in that Joe is unreachable for about 40 seconds of that 100 second total, you start to realise how little time you actually have. At 65,000 HP, you'll need 82 golden eggs to defeat Joe, which as you can imagine is just not feasible. It's 28 bosses. If you use the weak spot for golden eggs, it reduces this total down to 48 golden eggs, which is 16 bosses. What is noticeable about this is that number, 16 bosses, is way more achievable and something you can keep in mind. However, none of this is factoring in actually shooting Joe, so you'll reduce that number down even further the more you're able to put damage on Joe wherever you can. Every weapon is able to reach Joe, which can't can't be said for other king waves. My last piece of advice is regarding space and staying alive. If you've watched my other content, then you know what I'm going to say here about staying alive. But if you're new here, hello, stop dying, stop overextending, stop running into situations you're unsure you'll escape from. In freelance, there are no situations where you're better off dead. If you're struggling with Joe, think about how often you're dying and see if that's something you can improve on. Taking a second to think about your next actions is worth doing instead of panicking. This should also involve whether you should be more proactive with slaying enemies or whether specials should have been used sooner rather than later. I know this is easier said than done with some weapons and especially on high tide on some maps, but start learning about the spaces you can use, the platforms you can climb and maybe the corners you can use to your advantage. Dynamo is very fun for Joe so be a good teammate and stop dying. Lads I hope this helps, let me know what you think and good luck with your fights. If you liked this video and need more advice I've got lots of videos on how to improve at Samurun, whether it's weapons, specials, maps, hazards or other kings so check them out. I'll see you guys soon.